Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about blocks. Uh, this is a feature, a new feature that was added to Spark AI Studio recently. Uh, and uh, it's a very useful feature and that's why I want to uh, talk about this in this video. Uh, this will be one tutorial, simple tutorial, and I go to more advanced uh, features uh, in future videos. So uh, blocks, okay, so as you see, you can add asset. In the add asset, if you click, you have the option called block. Once you click it, a block is added. It means this asset is again resist uh, under the uh, the blocks folder. And once you create a block, a file is created, uh, which is uh, uh, the name of the block dot ar block. And the reason there's a file for it is because this is uh, transformable. We can actually export it and use it in other project, or recreate various instances. Uh, of the same block uh, in your project. Now, the block by itself is empty, and uh, this is kind of a similar in a way. Uh, it can be kind of an analogy to Photoshop uh, smart layers. You know, when we create something in Photoshop, you can just uh, uh, convert a layer, for example, into a smart block, and then you can edit it in another window, and any change that you make actually is reflected uh, in the scene. And uh, even if it has complex structure, like many layers, if the smart layer has many layers and other things, um, uh, other properties change and lots of complex things happening inside, you only see just a single smart uh, smart layer and that's it. So uh, this is good for large projects when you have kind of uh, many elements in the scene and you want to simplify the, uh, um, the management of the scene so you can create different blocks with different functionalities. Uh, and just you add the, um, this functionality, uh, sorry, you edit the block um, uh, content in another Spark AI Studio window. And this means if you're working in a group, you can let other person work on a certain block, and then every change that is made to this block is going to be reflected immediately in the scene once it is saved. Uh, or you can just make another person work on it, uh, uh, and then the file you can import it back into Spark AI Studio, and uh, of course the changes will be there, and you can just use that functionality. Or even if you don't use it straight away here, and another person is developing a block, the block can actually be shared, so people can create some sort of uh, functionality and then share it online for other people to use. This is also uh, uh, available for you. All right, so let's move on. So we created a block. So as you can see here, uh, if I want to access the content of the block, all I need to do is just uh, double tap. And as you can see, a new uh, window is opened. Now, the reason you see cache here and all the things is because I haven't saved the project yet. But of course, if you save the project, it will be under, under the location where the project is originally saved. Uh, so we have this window. And in this window, uh, we can add different different things. Uh, so for example, if I want to add, let's add, for example, a particle effect, all right? Again, this is uh, face mesh not available because of course it's available only under the main project. And if you want to add functionality, uh, you want to get input and output things that will update uh, things related to the face mesh. But we're gonna just deal with simple things. Our, uh, particle system uh, is something that uh, I always enjoy uh, demonstrating. So. We choose particle system and we're going to insert it. Now I insert it, I insert it into the block. As you can see, it's a different window, all right? So I have this particle system appearing in the origin of 000, x, y, z, in the center uh, of this uh, uh, 3D world, all right? Now there's no texture yet, and I'm actually going to apply the texture as an input. So I'm not going to do too many things here. Of course, we can change the properties like you do in regularly if you do, um, uh, if you just import, uh, uh, sorry, create a particle system in the main window. So I'm just leaving like that. But what I want to do is add uh, input. So this one gets an input of a texture, the block, and then it updates uh, these particles. And right now, there is no input. So how do I have an input? So before that, uh, let's do one thing. Uh, 
I can save it. When I save it, the block is updated. You see, it's not saved yet because there's a star here, you see, which is, means that it's not saved. Now I'm going to control S on Windows here and I'm going to save it. Now it's saved. Now the, this block in this window is actually now updated. Now you can't see anything yet because I haven't instantiated. So if you know, like uh, in 3D objects, you need to instantiate it in order to add it to the scene. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click the block. Uh, by the way, you can rename the block like, oh, sorry. You can rename it like anything you want. Yeah, you don't need to call it just block. You can rename it. Let's call it a particle effect, right? And we're going to right click, right click and choose instantiate. Once I've done it, uh, you can see that the block name appears here, particle effect. So there's an instance of this block here. Now, I want to show that if I right click again and choose again instantiate, there's another instance of this. They're now overlapping. As you can see, there are two of them right now. So I can actually create various instances of the block and instantiate them like I do with 3D objects. So let's just delete the second one. You just use one. All right. Uh, let's just add this one. Create a face mesh. Sorry, I just need the face tracker. I'm just going to hide this one. And uh, put the particle effects under the face tracker. Yeah, just so it looks like this. All right. And uh, about inputs. Now, if you go and click the particle effects, you're going to see here on the right sidebar, for the block input and outputs. Uh, now, input means that uh, this is data that you uh, transfer into the block, and output it will be data, uh, some data that will be transferred from the block outside. But uh, right now, we're going to deal with the input. Now, as you can see, there are no input and output just yet. All right, so what we need to do is create uh, an input for this block. All right, so in order to create an uh, input uh, for the block or output, uh, you need to go back to the block itself. So we double click, it opens the window, it's all not already open. And then what you need to do is click this block root element. If you are, for example, on the emitter, you just click this block root, tap it once. And then uh, on the sidebar, you're going to see uh, different options. One of them under edit is the block properties. All right. So what I'm going to do now is tap. I'm going to enlarge it so you can clearly see it again. This is the block window, right? The not the main one. So I'm going to click block properties and the window is open. Now I have the option to add inputs and outputs. All right. But what I want, as I mentioned before, I'm just going to put it here. Uh, again, I'm clicking block properties. I want to create an input because I want to input a texture uh, from the main uh, Spark AI window into the block so an image will appear here instead of the default one. All right. So what I do, I'm going to click inputs and I'm going to have this default name for block input zero. Once I click it, I have different options. I can give it a name, for example, uh, call it particle uh, texture, all right? Uh, I can choose the type of the input and make sure that this is exactly the type you are transferring. Uh, so we're gonna here choose, instead of number, we're gonna choose texture. There are different options like color, boolean. Boolean is true or false. Pulse, text, texture, vector two, three, and four. So we choose texture. All right, and you can have more options depending on which one you choose. Uh, once I'm fine with this, uh, I can just uh, go out. And if you look now with the window, you can see under input, there is the particle texture. All right. And here you can actually assign one. So this will actually be like a default uh, option. Uh, so if, for example, you don't supply any value, there will be one uh, which will be used by default. All right. So I'm not applying here anything, so I'm not doing anything. So what we need to do, of course, now, always remember to save. All right, so what we're going to do is just uh, I'm gonna double click here. 
I'm going to save it. So now it is saved, the block is saved with the input that we created here. So we need to go back to the window, main window. All right. Uh, now, if you look here, if you click the particle effect block, you can see there's already an input option here. So now if you click the particle effect, you can see you already have an option in the inputs, particle texture. Because this input is now exposed uh, to the main window, so it actually accepts uh, an input. And this input is a type of texture, which is the one we actually chose when you created it in the properties uh, for the block, remember? So this is now available because it's one of the properties of the block. And this is the properties, as you can see, properties of the block itself. Now I can, of course, choose a uh, texture here. Uh, by the way, I'm going to bring a texture here. All right. So now the reason we don't see the change here is uh, because uh, they are still not connected in the block. The texture is not connected to be to affect the particle uh, system. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go back to the block. All right. Uh, we're going to go back to the block. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to emitter. We're going to create a material for the emitter. All right. It's going to be material zero here. Uh, now what we're going to do is click the block root. And as you go down here, you see the input here. There's a producer patch here. If we create it, it allows us to get uh, the inputs uh, and also outputs, if we have outputs, uh, so we can use them in our patch editor. All right, so if you had now, you don't need to click it again. If I'm going to add another input, it's going to be reflected here. We're going to see two inputs. Right now, we have only one. You see particle texture. So this particle texture, what we have here, is going to be the one we're going to supply in the main window. So we go to material, and this is the material that we want to apply, and then uh, what we're going to do is uh, we need to update this texture. All right, this is the texture that will be seen here for the particle system. Right now, we see just kind of grayish thing, white, uh, because when if you can choose flat, you're going to see just white. Uh, so what we need to do is click this error uh, because we want to input something else into here. So patch created. This is the patch for the material. And all we need to do is now to bridge between the two is just connect this particle texture that we get as an input from the main window to the one in the block. Just like that. All right. Now we don't see anything just yet. So first of all, of course, we need to save. We're going to save it. So the block texture will be the one applied here. All right. Now we're going to go to the main window. All right. And as you can see, we can see that in this project that we used uh, the red color, now it affects, uh, it affects uh, the particle system. So what happens here again, we have a red texture, uh, which is being used here, all right? In the particle texture input, we send this texture, this texture here, yeah? We send it into the block. This is the input, we get it here, and the texture is, is assigned directly to the texture of the material which you use for the particle system. All right? So once you save it, this will be visible in the main screen, Spark AI Studio. All right? Uh, so this is a very simple implementation, how you can actually do this. Of course, you can change, make changes by just, um, for example, let's go to uh, particle effect. Yeah, of course, you can make changes by just creating this one, right? And you can actually create some logic here where you apply different textures and then assign it using the patch. So, for example, this is the texture, and if I transfer the texture, it will work the same way. I just did it in the patch editor instead directly to the properties option on the right sidebar. All right, so this works as well. 
So as you can see, uh, I'm going to demonstrate more advanced options, but this is a simple option that demonstrate how you can actually use blocks uh, to create, uh, um, to make kind of an atomic separation between different functionalities in your project. So for example, if I add this uh, more advanced functionality, uh, for example, let me show you, um, we're going to back to the block and we're going to duplicate this uh, emitter, right? You're going to have this emitter here, so two of them. So I'm creating kind of more advanced thing, another one, I'm going to put it here, even a fourth one, it's going to rotate it, right? So I'm going to create some complex thing that has quite a few nodes, as you can see. Uh, so different entities here. So we can get very complex thing, all right? And uh, what you can see that th both are using the same material, so they're going to inherit everything. So all of them will be red. And if you, go I'm not saving right now. I'm going back to the main window. You see, it's still just one, right? And now what I'm going to do is just click save. I just save it. I'm going back to the main window and look at this. Everything, every change that you made in the original block, is now reflected here. But as you can see, the complexity of the main window in terms of uh, node count remains the same because they only have uh, this particle effect block, nothing more. So that's why when you have uh, a very complex uh, scene, uh, for some fiddlers it's beneficial to use blocks uh, because it's very manageable. Again, one of the benefits is it's also manageable, transformable of course, and you can of course export it into other projects but as you can see it's very easy although I have here uh, quite a few particle systems already assigned like five of them here one two three four five all right and just imagine creating something more advanced and of course if I want to create something great here and I want to use another project you just need to import it and that's it so it's very simple all right so this is just uh, something simple uh, implementation of course and uh, I'm going to show you more advanced things I'm just demonstrating the texture here and of course you can also uh, have different input values uh, it's over input types and you can also export values uh, so you can use them in the patch editor in the original uh, in the main window the main project uh, not inside the block so again many things that it depends on the project you are doing if you're doing a simple project, you know, well, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, maybe I shouldn't bother with this. Uh, but when you develop a project, also, also think about uh, reusing different assets. So if you see somebody say, oh, maybe I should use this one. Maybe I'm going to use this one in other project as well. So maybe I should just create it as a block. So if I want to use it again, I can just import it into my project without the needing to recreate it again from, the, from scratch. So... Uh, this is uh, a great advantage of using uh, blocks. All right, so uh, we'll keep it simple. So I end this video here, uh, and more advanced features uh, will come. We'll follow in future videos. So I hope you enjoy this one. Uh, please don't forget to uh, follow me on uh, YouTube, and make sure you press the bell button so you can get notified when I release new tutorials. Uh, of course, I'm going to develop filters as well. So make sure you also check my Instagram at wowfilters.com. Uh, we're going to be uh, links in the description of this video so check them out um, yeah so I see you in the next video hope you enjoy this one bye everyone